The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next on Life Today, James and Betty encourage us to see our blessings as God's way to meet the needs of others. God is not trying to limit the blessings freedom put on us. He doesn't care if you gain and you succeed. He doesn't even care if you gain wealth. He just doesn't want that wealth or that success to capture your heart and take you away from noticing the least of these, noticing my neighbor, noticing someone that has a need and wanting to reach out to him in love. Betty and I welcome you to life today. I mean, we uh, come to a year end and a new beginning of another year. And Betty, you and I have been praying a long time for us to see the great spiritual awakening that we so desperately need. And there's no question the stage is set for it as far as need. Did you ever believe in your life that you would see the kind of things going on, the anger, uh, the dissension, the division that you're witnessing today? And and the assault on things that are precious, like marriage, like sexuality, like relationship, like the value of every life, even mm. the innocent and the unborn and the assault, the promotion of that which is really totally against God and against nature as being forced on people. Did you ever think you'd witness this in, in your lifetime? I really didn't. It's been in some ways disheartening because to see how far our world, our nation has gone in pulled away from God because this this nation was founded on the principles of God and his truth and his love and it just it breaks my heart to see what's happening to our world and and it breaks my heart to see what Christians we have a place here more important now than it's ever been I believe James to stand up and proclaim the truth of God but we have to do it in love we have to do it in forgiveness we have to to be caring about the truth that sometimes the truth is hard to take mm -hmm. sometimes it admonishes us and but yet if we will receive it and proclaim it in the way it God intended through his word and live it out first of all we have to live it out well you know the word the gospel is not just supposed to be declared, preached. It's supposed to be demonstrated. It's supposed to be lived out. Betty and I have been uh, soon married 57 years. We have been on television over 50 years. This is uh, the new year 2020. I'm praying, and you might just make a note of this, that we will have 2020 vision and then we'll see that vision as Paul saw it in Acts, starting with verse 19, but then 2020, when he talked about the importance of bringing all the elders together. And by the way, those of you who are older sometimes feel like you've just kind of been cast aside and what you think doesn't matter, but it does very much. I want to remind all of you that your prayers and your support for the truth and the way you share God's love is critical to the spread of the gospel around the world and to see the church begin to look like Jesus and to see the family of God become healthy. So with all the awful things that we're seeing, we have an opportunity right now to see with 2020 vision. And Paul said, I didn't hold back anything profitable. He said, I have warned you with tears and I've called for a minute. He said, three years weeping. And I've said to many times on this program, I've, I've said to you, I don't know if I can stop weeping. I kind of blame Billy Graham because years ago he called me and said he thought I was Jeremiah and I hadn't even read, oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears. And, and, and I'm telling you, if you experience a real awakening in your own spirit and revival, you're going to have a broken heart for the areas of God's concern and focus. Well, we have that concern, but I want, I want to tell you this right now. There are some people because Betty and I have felt like we need to speak to our national leaders, our business leaders, our church leaders, a call to return to God and to repentance, and that Christ is the hope of glory and the only hope for peace and for the future and for freedom, because he's the source of freedom. He said, if you abide in me, committed to me, committed to my will, my kingdom purpose, actually, because the kingdom's at hand, it's in you. He, he says that if, if you will do that, you're going to make a kingdom impact 
but you're going to be attacked. And he says, you need to come together like a body, like a family. And every member of the body is so important. So please understand you are so important. Well, we've got some people who are saying because we pray for our leaders or we pray with our leaders or we try to share wisdom with our leaders that we're, we're like becoming partisan. We're not, we're pro-biblical, pro-principle. We, we believe that there are standards that matter and we're seeking to call our national leadership, leadership in every area back to God, church leadership desperately and call the family of God together. And we believe with all of our heart those of you who've chosen to support Life Outreach, we think you understand what Jesus said about those who know him and those who don't. One of the most powerful passages in the entire Bible is found in Matthew 27. Now, I want you to listen. I'm, I'm going to just kind of go over it really rapidly because I want, to, I want to really cover some ground. But he's talking about the final judgment, the judgment of the nations. And he says, the Lord will call together the sheep and the goats, and he's going to separate them. Now, I want you to listen to what he said. The king will say to those on his right hand, the sheep, come, you are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, eternal life, life in his presence, in his power, in the fullness of his glory forever. This is eternity with him. No more war, no more enemy. No more separation, no more death, no more sin. This is where you're headed. But who is it that's called into this final kingdom life? Jesus says, here's who those people, those sheep are. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you to drink? And, and when did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick and come to you? And the king will answer. Now listen to the answer because this is, maybe these are the ones he says are going to enter heaven forever. He says, I'm going to show you what kind of a heart and spirit is controlling them. He said, here it is. I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, yes, the least of them, you did it to me. And to those on the left, he will say, depart from me, you accursed ones, into eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and those that carried and delivered his message, angels, messengers. They were committed to the message of destruction and evil. But who is it that enters into eternal life? Jesus said, those that see the least of these, the overlooked, those who have legitimate need and met those needs. He didn't say, you tell Pharaoh to look at them. He said, you noticed them. You didn't say Caesar, take care of them. You noticed them. And the reason, Betty, that it is so important for everyone to understand, the way we assist the poor, the way we assist the needy is to see the need, be moved with spiritual compassion, reach out and touch them in the area of need with love and a compassion connection, Betty, that's like a parent that really loves a child. When you're rearing a child, you don't just hand them all the resources that might someday be theirs and then not oversee their lifestyle. Now, those children can choose wrong, but you're going to choose right. Please understand this. The people that are going to enter heaven forever are those who understand kingdom living and kingdom purpose. They don't overlook the least of these. They care about the things that are important to the father. They care about things that matter. A good parent, Betty, when they're raising a child, they don't just fund that child to go out and do whatever they want to do. They give oversight, mm -hmm. they require responsibility and accountability. And that is precisely what the Father wants us to do. That's what we do with the poor. You may wonder, you, you say, James, when you help all these who are poor and starving and hungry, do you keep them dependent upon that help? No. We get them back on their feet, we stabilize their health, and we begin to show them how to live off the land 
how to grow crops, how to even learn to do meager irrigating where it's possible, catch rainwater, get them into school. We even move the feeding to the schools to keep them coming there so they can grow. In other words, it's a process of love. We don't just throw people's money or food at the problem. We flow love at that problem. And that is the only way we're going to deal with the serious issues that we face in America. It's going to take the love of God. It's going to take a compassion connection. This is what I try to communicate with all leaders, with all business people, all entrepreneurs, all wealth creators, all who have anything. God is not trying to limit the blessings freedom put on us. He doesn't care if you gain and you succeed. He doesn't even care if you gain wealth. He just doesn't want that wealth or that success to capture your heart and take you away from noticing the least of these, noticing my neighbor, noticing someone that has a need and wanting to reach out to him in love. Betty, that is what Life Outreach has been doing now for almost 30 years. And these viewers, when they see the need, and they know love will meet it, and they see a missionary and workers who are filled with the love of God in place, they enable to do it. That is what you and I are trying right now to get everybody in America to understand. We've got to come together and stand on the word of God and not compromise. We've got to return to God. We have turned away from God. And, and Romans 1 says that if you change God's truth into a lie, if you change it into a lie, then you are given over to control by appetites, even unnatural appetites, and all manner of wickedness is the result. And God says in the last verse of Romans 1, you will not only do these things, but give hearty approval to them. Now, what brings about the change? Betty, I am convinced because the viewers of life who understand what it is to share life, to see the least of these, I believe they know the heart of God and I believe if we join together and pray and you say, James, speak the truth to everyone with ears to hear, proclaim it from the housetops, from house to house, publicly and privately and personally, proclaim the truth. We're going to support that. Betty, if, if you and I feel that God wants us to speak truth and someone watching says, if you do that and you talk to those people, we're not going to help the least of these anymore. I've got, a, I've got a question. What's going on in your heart? How could anyone refuse to help somebody because they see someone like us speaking to someone in high authority who may have had a failed past? We know many of our leaders have. We know our president has. He's acknowledged that. And he's told us, I want to know what is right and do what is right. And we're trying to help him. Can you imagine someone saying, no to the least of these because we're trying to love them and point others in the right direction with that 2020 vision in Acts 2020 that Paul had. He was warning people, speaking repentance to them, but at the same time encouraging compassion and responsibility, which is what the Word of God teaches. Do you see your husband virtually every day of my life trying to get that message out? And do you see what you consider an obvious positive effect of it? Absolutely. And I, just as you said, how can we choose who we'll pray for, who we'll share love with, who we will go the extra mile with, who will be, we will be determined to reach out in the love of Jesus and say, well, I don't like that person, so why should I spend time trying to tell them about the change that can come in their life if they know God? God didn't pick and choose when he chose us. He said, come, all that will come and receive me into, into this, this life that I want to give you, eternal life, if you'll just accept me and, and, for, and ask for forgiveness. Well, I think everyone has that right to do that. And so how can we put limits on who God wants us to pray for and who God wants us to reach out to, James? I mean, what if God had not chosen he said, well, I don't know about that person. They can't make, they'll have a lot of struggles in life. How, why would I want to fool with them? I mean, I think, uh, how can I, when God received me, how can I not receive someone else that maybe at the moment they don't know God, they don't think that they want God, but I know that they need God. So how can I turn them away and not pray for them and reach out to them? And when we reach out in love, we watch the transforming mm -hmm. effect of the gospel. You have watched 
me witness to people and share God's truth faithfully with people that had a terrible past, but who said, I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray for me. I want you to encourage prayer. Betty, it has broken my heart to have some people say, because you pray for our president, you pray with him, you talk to him, you've traveled with him. We're not gonna help you anymore. What does that do to your heart when you hear something like that from someone? Well, it breaks my heart because this is what, I mean, God has called us to, when we accepted him, was to serve him and to take his truth, his word, and make it, a, I mean, it's a living word. It's a, it's a word, it's a journey in life. And just as God has walked us through our journey, we haven't always, I mean, in our walk, we don't always do everything the best way. We've had to come back and repent. And I, it's in our journey, James, I, I didn't, when I accepted Jesus, I just didn't, become mature all of a sudden in the ways of God and in knowledge of his word and truth. I had to grow into it and I'm still growing. I'm 76 years old. I'm still growing. And so it, it, it's, it's a daily walk and we must be patient when we don't think someone is walking into the light, into God's truth as quickly as we think they should. Because my walk's been kind of slow at times when I'm learning in God's teaching. And you, me. Know, you know the patience you've had to mm -hmm. have with me as God's worked for me and your love has been a transforming force and power in my life. And so has yours. We've told you many, many times that your prayers have carried us. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you right now that uh, your prayers are what's making all the positive difference right now in our nation, and there are some positive changes. I know that you get very weary of hearing all of the arguing and all the scuttlebutt and the accusation, and people don't always handle problems appropriately. But here's the beautiful thing about prayer. When Betty and I brought to your attention the least of these all over the world, we did not know if you would help. But when you saw them, the Spirit of God moved you to help. And miracles occurred. Nations were changed by it. And miracles are continuing to occur in those places because love never fails. Right now, we're asking you to pray for our leadership in the church, in the business community, and in our nation and for our leaders that God will transform everything and he's working miracles. Right now, we've had some people say, well, we're not gonna help you because you prayed for leaders that, you know, they didn't live right. But they're trying to do right because God has moved in their heart because they wanna see prayers answered. They wanna see wisdom prevail. And all of us as believers, we want it. We want the least of these touched here at home and around the world. And you don't help the poor by throwing money at them. You've got to have a compassion connection. And we don't let Pharaoh determine how the people's money is used to control people. We want to help people. So right now, we've got an opportunity to live with 2020 vision and to see a miracle occur right here in 2020. Please pray for us. Please pray for me as I do talk to leaders and spend time with them because I'm never gonna waver. And I'm gonna speak truth with unconditional love. Would you help us here at the year end and beginning the new year? Would you help us reach out and put God's arms around the least of these? Right now with mission feeding, we can feed three children, five children, 10 children for 30, 50, $100 for the next month. And I'm gonna tell you, we need a miracle surge of support. I don't want to say no to one child. Father, I pray we'll see the greatest outpouring of love and support we've ever seen in our ministry through your yielded family members full of your love in Jesus' name. I want you to watch. Watch closely. Let God speak to your heart and then do what God leads you to do. One of the urgent things for this challenge is High mortality rate. Most of these children, some of them are not even able to live up to five years. Kwashoko causes high mortality in these clinics if, if we don't assist. Kwashiorkor is a specific type of malnutrition that's common in rural Africa. I've knelt by the graves of children who died from malnutrition, so I know its deadly effects. But while knowing and hearing about malnutrition is one thing, seeing it is another. Malnutrition. Hunger. 
These words fail to convey the suffering of a child whose body is shutting down from a lack of food. And words alone will not heal that suffering. My parents started mission feeding as an act of love and honor for human life. It continues to save lives in Africa today, but only if it's supported by our viewers. And we cannot forget that there are those that we can still save. All those children who are on the edge of death, they're malnourished, they're hungry. When you help us get mission feeding to a village in need, you're stopping malnutrition in its tracks. You're telling these children that they matter and that they are loved. Help us provide food for children who desperately need it now. Help save lives today. Now, what do you think, listening to your son, our son, talk about those precious children? Well, it blesses me because you and I haven't been over there many, many times, and we've seen the hungry. We've seen the mothers that are just weeping because their babies are gone. We couldn't get to them in time, but we've also seen the difference that it's made. And it's not just James and I, it's not just life outreach. It's you. You've made the difference. You've been a part of what God continually wants to do, and that's reach out to the poor and the needy and these precious little ones that, that can't do for themselves, and they're going to die if we don't get the nourishment to them. So I hope you see how important it is for you to join with us and to help us as we care for these little ones so that they might grow up and have an opportunity in life. You know, I see every one of those little children, and, and I have seen those, those graves so many times, and I just say, God, please. We've been told that we've, you know, saved up to 15 million children's lives, we meaning you who watch us. You're the ones that uh, really reach out as the sheep of God's pasture who love him and minister not only to them but to Jesus. And I want to thank you. And as we close this year, I've been told that if we don't have a miracle response, that we're actually going to have to say no to some of the missionaries' requests. And one of the things, Betty, that just tears at my heart is I've heard back from some that because I pray with the president and I've traveled with him and tried to advise him, and he asked us to surround him with prayer and with wisdom, and I made it clear wisdom come from above. Just because I'm doing that and I'm trying to call America back to God, and people are saying, well, we're not going to help you anymore. You're a false prophet. I can't even tell you how that's cut in my heart. And to think, well, if you don't stop helping somebody we don't like, trying to show them the ways of God, we're not helping you. God, please, I'm saying to you, what I'm doing here at home is for you, your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Preachers and leaders have called from all over the world and said, do you all realize there, James, that where freedom goes there, that's where it goes all over the world. Please call people back to God. Please keep doing what's right and go in the right direction. If you believe it's important for us to proclaim the truth and demonstrate it, not in word only, but deed. I'm asking you for the greatest love gift year end, new year beginning ever in your life right now. And I'm told we must have that kind of miracle. Would you please go online or dial that number and make the gift God's putting on your heart? Would you do it right now? Please help us say yes to the missionaries and the least of these. Thank you so much for calling you be determined to get through or go online. Thank you for your gift. Mission Feeding began with a promise to be there in times of crisis for thousands of hurting and hungry children in their time of need. Now more than ever, we need your help to save lives by feeding and caring for children across the continent of Africa. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish our supplies to reach the 400,000 children who are counting on us. 
your gift of love can be the miracle answer to a desperate mother's prayer. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 that will help feed and care for three, five, or ten children for three full months. With your gift, we'll send you the Altered Worship CD by Anthony Evans. This powerful full-length album includes unique versions of some of today's most cherished worship songs that are sure to uplift and inspire you. With your gift of $100 or more, please request a Filled with Faith and Joy travel mug set. These 12-ounce mugs are crafted with large handles, double-layered insulation, and vacuum-sealed lids to prevent spills. Each mug includes a message to remind you of God's blessings and faithfulness. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our commemorative bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Well, you know, I'm believing here as we uh, approach the year end that you're going to make a great year end gift to give people hope for life. We're not only going to feed them, care for them, we're going to point them to life forever. Anthony uh, Evans' uh, altered CD, I mean, that's the title. Boy, it's changed lives. We'll really bless you, all the gifts we send. But, Betty, our viewers, are giving the greatest gift. That's what right. we just celebrate Christmas is mm -hmm. the life Jesus That's gives right. us. You're sharing that life. You share it with the least of these and with everybody you want to see God get his arms around. Well, Betty and I say thank you for all you're going to bless. Pray for us as we seek to point everyone with ears to hear to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you so much for your help. Regardless of your net worth, estate planning benefits you and your family. Do not put off this important step to peace of mind. Contact Life Planning Services today. Lord, help me is one of the most honest, intimate prayers that God loves to receive from his children. Sheila Walsh, tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.